Hello and welcome to the Met Office 10 Day Trend, a forecast that takes us through the rest of March and into the start of April. Now, if you live in the south, you might have noticed it's been a wet month so far. This is shown up quite well on the rainfall anomaly up to the 21st of March. Normally, at this point in the month, you'd expect closer to the white colours or at least the uh, light brown. But across much of the south of the UK, blues showing above average rainfall for March as a whole in the first three weeks. Browns towards the northwest of Scotland, so it has been a bit drier here. However, to put this in the full context, it's a reverse of what we saw in February, which of course was very dry across much of the UK, especially in the south, closer to average rainfall in the northwest of Scotland. So why has March so far been wet in the south? Well, that's actually a legacy of the sudden stratospheric warming that we saw in mid-February. Now that, of course, created disturbances throughout the atmosphere. It led to a large area of high pressure across Greenland and a south shifted jet stream. And we're continuing to see the legacy of that south shifted jet stream through the next few days, carrying areas of low pressure into the UK with further bouts of rain or at least some unsettled weather with strong winds at times because the rainfall is increasingly of a showery nature. Certainly Thursday's looking like a showery day across the UK. Some heavy downpours in places, some rumbles of thunder, some more persistent rain just pushing into the south and southeast by the evening. Now it's at this stage that uh, there's some lively showers pushing into west and southwestern parts as well and some gusty winds. There's a 5% chance, as indicated by a minority of computer model runs, that we'll see some even stronger winds for a time as a deeper area of low pressure forms associated with these showers. But what looks more likely is we'll just see this continued blustery shower regime into Thursday night. Some clear spells at times, but enough of a breeze to prevent temperatures from falling too far. A bright start for many on Friday, but Friday's another day of bright spells and some of these heavy downpours, some lively showers out there. Again, some rumbles of thunder and gusty winds, winds touching gale force around some exposed coasts and hills in the south and southwest. Not so windy further north. So these low pressure systems continuing to bring some lively weather over the next few days, but at least the rain rattling through fairly quickly, even if it will be heavy at times. 12 to 14 Celsius in the south on Friday, 10 to 11 in the north, a degree or two lower than what we're seeing during Wednesday at the time of recording. Low pressure then, as we start the weekend, pushes into the North Sea. We'll continue to see these spells of showers or longer spells of rain. And this little feature likely to push in close to the southwest on Saturday night. Some uncertainty about its track, but that has the potential to bring some further showers or longer spells of rain into the southwest and then southern parts as it clears through the first thing Sunday. Following that, we've got colder winds returning from the north on Saturday. And Saturday could bring some wintriness to the showers in the north of Scotland. And then by Sunday, those wintry showers extending further south behind a weather front which is likely to turn to snow over the hills on its back edge. So cold air, air returning, that air coming from the Arctic, bringing a marked temperature difference by the time we get to the start of next week. And it will be cold enough in some spots for snow, but this isn't looking like a, a really potent, very wintry northerly. It's just going to make it feel a bit colder and mostly the snow will not settle. So. Turning colder, yes, these are the typical daytime temperatures in the north, 10 degrees or so on Thursday, Friday, and then into the weekend back to the mid single figures before slightly bumping up again on Monday and Tuesday. 24 hour difference for southern areas, as you can see, it's on Monday that those temperatures reach a nadir. They drop from 14 Celsius down to eight or nine degrees before a slight return on Tuesday. And it will be cold enough in some spots for snow, but we're not looking at anything particularly abnormal. This is the snow depth likely on Sunday afternoon. And as you can see, most of the UK, nothing. But for well, some of the hills of northern Scotland, there are some indications of a few centimetres of snow. Now, fast forward 12 hours and with a bit of nocturnal cooling, 
There are indications that we'll see snow coming down to slightly lower levels across northern parts of Scotland, and perhaps affecting, say, the North York Moors, some of the higher parts of North Wales, and so on, uh, but only a centimetre or two. So the main hazard, I think, as we begin next week would be some slippery surfaces where we see those showers coming and going through the night, and a frosty start for many on Monday. But you can see on here where the showers will be distributed on Sunday, mainly the north and then later the North Sea coast. Many other places settling down. The sunshine comes out with high pressure building in from the west, although it will be a cold start to Monday. And we keep that cold air throughout the UK on Monday itself. There are indications that this little feature will move in from Iceland to bring some more persistent rain, sleet and hill snow to northern and central Scotland and some stronger winds for a time, so we'll keep an eye on that. But away from that, actually many places will just be dry, bright and feeling chilly, although the winds will ease at the start of next week. And we keep that chilly air, albeit with largely dry conditions on Tuesday. And it's a chilly start for many on Wednesday, but Wednesday itself, it looks likely to change once again. This is the most likely weather pattern, 47% probability, but the other weather patterns indicated by the computer models are quite similar to this. Low pressure pushing back in from the west. Of course, as that bumps into the cold air, the initial band of rain moving in will likely be falling as snow in places, mainly northern hills, before it turns back to rain because we'll be seeing milder southwesterly winds return. And that low likely to still be with us on Thursday. So an unsettled end to next week, but with temperatures recovering. Now this weather pattern is associated with the, the blue colour here, and this chart shows the probability of different weather patterns occurring during the next couple of weeks, each day's labelled on the bottom there. And quite clear indications there. The blue colours indicate low pressure close to the UK, the reds indicate higher pressure closer to the UK. So this clear trend through the weekend to turn colder, yes, but also more settled for the start of next week. Then the blues return, but as you can see, a lot of different colors by the time we get to the start of April. And that would suggest a lot of uncertainty in terms of where the low and high pressure areas are likely to be by that stage. So the weather patterns in control of our weather. And this isn't uncommon at this time of year. It is increasingly difficult during the spring and early summer to predict further ahead than we do in the winter because the jet stream tends to be weaker and more erratic. But there are a couple of things we can say about the next couple of weeks. One thing we can say is that after a cold start to next week, with temperatures here below the red and below the blue lines, those are the daytime and overnight averages, this is the midpoint of the UK, those temperatures begin to trend back up again and in some cases they go back above average for the time of year for the start of April, but more likely around average. Now that's the one thing we can say through next week and into the start of April. The other thing is that sea level pressure, so the uh, low pressure that we've got at the moment likely to increasingly become less low and a bit higher as we go into the start of April. This shows the uh, pressure anomaly around uh, the middle of the UK and the zero uh, pressure there is in the middle and so above this you'd have higher pressure indicated and below that you'd have lower pressure indicated and quite a strong signal for the week leading up to Monday the 27th for low pressure, which is indeed what we're seeing. And then this trend for that pressure anomaly to return to zero, so back to around average air pressure for the UK for the start of April. These are, uh, well, that's Friday the 31st, so the seven days leading up to Friday the 31st and then Monday the 3rd of April. Friday the 7th of April, so the seven days leading up to Friday the 7th of April, and it's centred, although with a lot of uncertainty, around zero in terms of its anomaly. So that would suggest that as we get into April, the south shifted jet stream and that low pressure over much of the UK will start to push to a more typical um, position for the time of year, more towards the northwest of the UK, with a better chance of some drier interludes, albeit with still some showers, some April showers perhaps, for the start of April. So, unsettled, yes, for the next few days. Wet and windy weather continuing for the time being, but uh, less unsettled into the start of April.